in section 15.7, we are exploring Stokes' theorem. Now, Stokes' theorem provides us with a three-dimensional version of the circulation form of Green's theorem that we've already explored. So let's get started here with a review of Green's theorem in circulation form. So we want to let C be a closed, simple, smooth, oriented curve in the xy plane, enclosing a simple connected region R in R2. We also want to go ahead and let F be a vector field that's differentiable in R region in R2. So then, let's recall that Green's theorem tells us that the line integral over the closed curve C of the vector field dotted with the differential d vector r is equal to the double integral over that two-dimensional region r in the plane of the curl. So the partial derivative of g with respect to x minus the partial derivative of f with respect to y dA. So we have, again, this line integral gives us circulation along our region r excuse me, a circulation along the curve, C, and the double integral here is giving us the sum of the curl of the vector field over all the points of R. So this is the sum of the curl of our vector field along all points in R. So what is this telling us? So if a vector field, F, represents a fluid's flow, then Green's theorem tells us that the cumulative rotation of the flow within that region, R, is equal to the circulation along its boundary. So we have the cumulative rotation of flow within that region, R is equal to the circulation along the boundary. And again, we've already looked at Green's theorem in a previous section, so now we want to think about how we can extend Green's theorem and get Stokes' theorem. So let's take a look. So here we want to look at the conversion from Green's theorem to Stokes' theorem. So I want you to make a note that in Stokes' theorem, that region R in the plane of Green's theorem becomes an oriented surface S in R3. So this becomes an oriented surface S in space. I also want you to note that the circulation integral of Green's theorem is now over the closed, simple, smooth-oriented curve C that forms the boundary of the surface S. So the circulation integral of Green's theorem is now over the closed, simple, smooth curve C that forms the boundary of our surface S. And last but not least here, I want you to note that the double integral of the curl of the vector field of Green's theorem is now a surface integral of that three-dimensional curl. So let's take a minute and think about what this looks like, what this mapping of Green's theorem to Stokes' theorem is going to look like. So we'll start by thinking about circulation form of Green's theorem. Which we're already familiar with. So we know that the vector line integral over that closed curve C in the circulation form of Green's theorem 
converts to the double integral over that region r in the plane of the curl of the vector field. So let's think, we'll say here is that oriented curve C, and the bounded region by this C makes up that region R in the plane. And so we know again that the vector line integral over the closed curve C of the vector field dot the differential d vector R, the circulation, is equal to the double integral over that region R in the plane of the curl of the vector field in two dimensions. We have the partial derivative of g with respect to x minus the partial derivative of f with respect to y dA. Again, we're already familiar with this. So we now want to think, how is this going to map to Stokes' theorem? And we'll again think about these conditions here. So we know that this region R in the xy, or in the plane, becomes an oriented surface S in three dimensions. So we'll say that this is mapping to some surface here. Here is our surface in R3. And so we're thinking about the whole surface. Now let's also keep in mind here that the circulation integral of Green's theorem is now over the closed simple smooth curve C that forms the boundary of our surface. So we're talking about the boundary down here. Here's that, we still have that closed simple smooth curve C. Again, this is still oriented. That bounds that region R. And so, last but not least, we want to keep in mind that the double integral of the curl of the vector field in R2 of Green's theorem now becomes the surface integral of the curl in R3. So what this is telling us is that the vector line integral over that closed curve C of the vector field dotted with that differential d vector R is now equal to the double integral over the surface S of the curl in R3. So we know that's defined as the cross product of the gradient and the vector field. And this is dot the normal vector n. And of course, we integrate with respect to our surface. So before we go ahead and look at the official theorem for Stokes' theorem, we need to discuss the importance of the orientation and look at a little shortcut, the right-hand rule. And the reason I want to stress orientation here is because Stokes' theorem not only involves an oriented curve C, but it involves an oriented surface S on which there exists two normal vectors at every point. So these two orientations must be consistent, and we must choose these normal vectors correctly. So the two orientations must be consistent. So the orientation of the curve and the surface must be consistent, and the normal vectors must be chosen correctly. So how do we choose the right normal vectors? Well, fortunately, there is a right-hand rule for Stokes' theorem. So let's consider this surface down here. And I want you to take your right hand, wiggle your fingers, wiggle that right hand right now. And now I want you to wrap your fingers, the fingers of your right hand, I want you to curl them in the positive direction around C, so that counterclockwise direction around C. So curl the fingers of your right hand around C in the positive direction. In that counterclockwise direction. So notice that your right thumb, wiggle that right thumb, this points in the general direction of the normal vectors to our surface. So if you curl the fingers of your right hand around the curve C in a positive direction, then your right thumb
points in the general direction of the normal vectors on the surface. Your right thumb points in the general direction. So again, taking our right hand, we curl our fingers around, around our oriented curve C here. And notice that your right thumb is pointing in the direction of the vectors normal to the surface. And keep in mind, as we move our hand, the normal vectors are changing. And this is because the surface is oriented. So a common example, when our curve C is oriented in the counterclockwise direction, as we have here, when viewed from above, the vectors normal to the surface are pointing upwards, as we've demonstrated with this illustration. And we're officially ready for Stokes' theorem. So to begin, we want to let S be a smooth surface in space with a smooth closed boundary C whose orientation is consistent with that of the surface. Now we will assume that vector field F, defined by the components F, G, H, is a vector's field whose components have continuous first-order partial derivatives on this surface. Then, Stokes' theorem tells us that the vector line integral over the closed curve C of the vector field dotted with the differential d vector r is equal to the double integral over this oriented surface S of the curl of the vector field. So the gradient that del operator crossed with the vector field dotted with that normal vector, and we're integrating here with respect to the surface. And we should make one little lo love note here that this is where vector n is that principal unit normal vector to the surface the unit normal vector to S, our surface, determined by the orientation of the surface, as we just saw with our right hand rule. So this is Stokes' theorem. And the general meaning of Stokes' theorem is similar is much the same as Green's theorem. So under the proper conditions, the accumulated rotation of the vector field over the surface S is equal to the net circulation on the boundary of our surface. So let's go ahead now and look at some examples.